All right, well, uh, let's get this started. So, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, joining us on this webinar, one of our first in our series. Um, today we're going to be talking about is the iPad a real business tool? Uh, my name is David Guest. I work with Action Coach. Um, I've got here with me today Jason Gibbs from MacAid. Hi, David. Yeah, good day, Jason. How are you going? Yeah, good. Very good. That's excellent. So, um, look, a lot of people that are coming on the call today are probably guilty of carrying around an iPad with them for quite some time now and not actually working out the best way to use it in business. So, I suppose a bit of history, because you know, I'm a bit of a tech head myself, and I know that uh, I used to use a tablet PC, and I used to love the concept of having a PC that you could actually carry with you and replace your notepad with. But one of the issues with a tablet PC, they were very heavy, their battery life was very short, so in essence, it was pretty clunky. Um, two or three years ago, the iPad came into the market. Um, everyone thought it was a bit of a toy, they could use it to browse the web, they could use it to check email, but what we noticed is more and more people are carrying these things around with them these days. So the question today is, can it be used as a business business tool or is it really just a toy? It, uh, and it's clear when you, when you go to uh, business seminars or, or anywhere where there's business people, almost all business people these days seem to uh, seem to carry them, but uh, not everyone actually gets them out and uses them for much other than uh, maybe a bit of web surfing and, and those sort of uh, applications. There's certainly much more than that you can do to drive productivity in your business. Great, great. Look, really what we're going to cover during this webinar is we're going to talk about a number of applications, but not so much the technology as much as the real world application. So, you know, I've watched these people on the trains and I've watched people in meetings carrying their iPad in, but no, nonetheless, most of the time they still put it to the side and open their paper notepad. So what, what's going on there, Jason? What do you think the issues are that are stopping people using this as a real business tool? Often people just don't know um, how to uh, set it up and really create an environment where it's effective. Um, okay. Yep. Great. So, look, um, we've got a few slides that are going to help us go through the details. And um, let's just talk about some of the uh, those basic concepts or where the barriers are. Because one of the biggest issues I see is that people are struggling to actually take notes when they use this thing within a meeting. They are struggling to understand how it's better than using note paper or in other applications is, well, what are the apps that I can use in business? I think one of the key concepts of what, what the biggest benefit you can get from the iPad is is around the concept of um, of one version of the truth that basically the content that lives on your iPad will then share the rest of your business systems whether it's your computer or um, server systems and even other staff members where appropriate. Okay, so really you're, you're talking about using it like a window to your IT system. Yep. So that would be things like iCloud. Uh, yeah, in some places iCloud or even your own um, server or other um, applications. So, for example, things like um, Evernote have their own back end that, uh, that manages that sharing for you. Right. It's right. also important from the security perspective. One concern people sometimes have about the iPad is what if I lose it? Um, if you've constructed your, your workflows so that everything goes back to some sort of server or back to your machine, then really it, it acts like an instant backup for you. Okay, so really what you're talking about is using an iPad like a window to your system. Yep. Uh, you can be anywhere in the world, so long as you've got an internet connection, you can access that information. Yep. Um, once you can access that information, then you can uh, either update it on the fly, or you can use it in front of a client or on site when you're, when you're on premises as well. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so, so what, what are the tools that they can use there? Well, iCloud's the obvious one because that's the one that Apple pushes and that really allows people to synchronise things like their um, calendars, their uh, email, their... What else does it synchronise? So iCloud, I guess, is, um, is great for a single user um, yep. and it allows you to, to synchronise that sort of data, but there are a whole lot of other business services as well and even as simple as things like exchange servers or equivalent where you've got a mail server that can synchronise all your mail, calendars and contacts, that's a great start, but it's certainly by no means okay. all you can do. Okay. Um, so, so that really takes care of the initial, like the email yep. and, and all of that sort of content. Look, the next thing that I find very valuable is the thing called Dropbox. Yep. And Dropbox is really independent of Apple, 
it's, it's a system that allows me to have a subdirectory on my hard drive, which I can share with multiple computers across the internet. It also means all the files that are within Dropbox can be accessed on my iPad as well. Yep, as that well is. as your, your other machine, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and it allows me to include things like PDF files, um, Word, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, basically any format of document, even yep. photos, so that they're transparently available across any platform. Yep. Which means that if I'm, if I'm in a meeting and I need to open a Word document, I can. I can edit it on the iPad, and then what I can do is I can shift that, uh, just update that document straight into Dropbox and go back to my computer and use it. There's other very similar services that you can run, um, well, either through the cloud or if you, you're a larger business and you've got your own server, there's things like um, SharePoint and Carrier Workspace that offer similar sort of functionality in terms yep. of being able to, to view that content as well and also structure that content a bit better than Dropbox. So it really depends a lot on you, the scale of your business, whether right. Dropbox is a great solution or some other tools Yeah. as yeah. well. Look at the key concept is the same, isn't it? It's about having that ubiquitous access to that, that data. Yeah. Look, um, look. One, one of the things I wanted to share with the, with the attendees today is really the applications that I use. Yeah. Um, because being being a person that sort of embraces technology, I, I've tried hundreds of different apps, and I wanted to sort of list my top five favourites. Maybe we can discuss how they can be used. Yeah. So shall we? Shall we uh, bring that up as a demo? Yeah. Sure. So. Uh, I'm going to get Jason and wave his magic wand and put the iPad on the screen for you so you can actually see some of these applications. Bear with me just a tick. Sure. While you're getting that up, I might as well start talking about those apps as well. Look, the very first app that I put on my iPad, and I use it on my iPhone as well, and on my PC at work, and also on my, on my MacBook, is a thing by the name of Evernote. Now, what Evernote actually is, it's, it's sort of like a note-taking application which allows you to have attachments as well, but uh, it means that I can actually take notes on my iPad, take notes on my laptop, take notes on my iPhone, and all of those notes show up in one place. Now, hopefully this will come up in a moment, a little bit of delay. I'm just going to give an example of what Evernote looks like. Because the beauty of this sort of note-taking application means I can be in a meeting and I can take notes. I can actually record the meeting in audio as well, and then what I can do is just save it, and as I walk out of the meeting, that's automatically being synchronized to the cloud, and automatically being synchronized to my desktop at, at work as well. So what, what you've got on the screen now is what Evernote looks like when you're in it. And if we just put a new note in, what you'll see is that uh, it opens up a new window, and in that window I have the option of just typing things in, so I can just tap to edit the body text. It automatically identifies where we are and puts that in the note subject. So your notes are already categorized by location. Now, if you have an appointment in your calendar, it will actually pick out the appointment at that time and stick it into the subject field as well. That's fantastic, isn't it? Because a lot of the problem people have, for example, with a traditional note um, pad is that you write all these notes and then you put them somewhere, you can't find them. Or even if you've got your note, uh, pad with you, you're rifling through trying to define that yeah. particular meeting or session. Absolutely, and the other thing, people they're still using paper-based notepads and they're writing notes in there, which is traditional. Yeah. Um, what I do is, uh, if I ever revert to writing handwritten notes, I walk into the office, I put them on the scanner, and I scan them into Evernote. Because one of the there's a couple of cool features of Evernote. Number one, you'll notice there's a, little, a few little icons in the top right-hand corner. One of them is you can take photos and insert them into the drawing. The other one is that you can actually, the second icon you'll see up there is one that allows you to take photos from your library and add those into your Evernote as well. The third one is a little microphone. And that microphone allows us to start recording the meeting that we're having. So what it does is it, it, it saves an audio file also from that meeting as we're taking notes. Now the beauty with all that is when that's all done and you just click the, you just close your iPad, that is now saving up to the cloud while we're sitting here having conversation. So it's quite handy to do this. So you can see now I've just taken a screenshot and I've added it to the note. So if I go back to the office and open up Evernote on my computer now, this note already exists on there. The other thing it has attached to it is it has the GPS location, so it tells me where I was and I took that note. Now, there's a couple of other cool features that I just wanted to show you because one of the issues with having notes on a computer is they get lost in files. And so Evernote has this option to allow you to add tags. 
And tags is one of those things that is very, very powerful because it allows me to actually add a tag to a note or multiple tags to a note, which means I can search by those tags. So just to give you an example, um, what we're going to do is we're going to create some tags. And we're going to use those tags to actually to actually identify this note for future reference. So we'll create one called iPad Seminar, and I'll create another one called David Guest. Now, by doing this, what I've done is I've created. Oh, I it's iPad very well, but let's fix that. So what you can see now is that we've actually got a couple of tags associated with that note. That doesn't sound like much right now. If we go back into our, if we get out of this note now, and then we go into our tag section of our note, what we're going to see is that we can actually find these notes in several different ways. Now where this is useful, you might be having a meeting with a team. So you would tag that note team meeting. And in that team, you might have different attendees, like we've got Jason Gibbs and David Guest. So I would tag with those three sets of keywords. Now, any time in the future, if I want to find out any conversations or any meetings I've had with Jason, I can search under the tag of Jason, and I will find all the notes that have him tagged in. Now, doing this allows us to access all those notes in the future. Now, the other really cool thing about uh, Evernote that most people don't realize is if I scan a handwritten document into Evernote, the Evernote server will actually do a character recognition for search purposes, which means whatever I wrote by hand, I can search on later Fantastic. to find these notes. Now, the amount you can use when you when you when you get Evernote, it's basically free. And what happens is every time that you add notes to it, you've got a quota that you can use per month. And I think it's one gig per month, which is massive. That's a lot of uh, lot of text. Yep, I've never hit it, and even with scanning documents in, I've never hit it, and it just allows me to have this folder that I can take my iPad anywhere, and any note I've ever taken is accessible to me by search. So this becomes a great place to save my handwritten notes, because the thing I found when I got the iPad was, how do I get handwritten notes in? How do I use it like a notepad? And how do I manage those so I can access those notes when I need? So now it's become a part of my daily activity and daily tool. I guess the key is making sure that it's using it like a notepad, but better, right? Yeah. Because if you're just going to use it like a notepad, a pure notepad, you might as well yeah. use a notepad. Now, the only thing that Evernote doesn't do yet is allow me to use a stylus to do handwriting on the screen. Now, they've just bought a company called Penultimate, which actually provides that service, so they will be integrating in the future. But at the moment, what I do is I use a secondary application. And I've got two that I prefer to use. One of them is one called um, Note Taker HD. Um, it's about a $5 application. Now, in the scheme of things, $5 is nothing. But what that application allows me to do is I create PDF forms. And I use these forms to actually give me structure for my meetings. But I can call up a form and use that as part of a meeting and just write handwritten notes over that form. Now, at the end of that, I email it to my Evernote account it does character recognition on it, and it stores it with tags. So that becomes my filing cabinet that I carry with me. The second one that's really cool is this, this one called Notability. And I'm just going to pull this one up because this is another interesting application. And this is one that allows me to do handwritten notes. It also allows me to record the meeting as I'm writing the notes. Now, the really cool thing about Notability is if I'm typing notes while I'm in a meeting, <coughs> What it allows me, it actually tags where in the meeting I was typing the notes in relation to the audio. So I can go back to a seminar that I was at while I was typing notes and I can click on a word and it'll take me, it'll cue me to that point in the seminar and tell me what was said at that point during the seminar. Okay, so you mean if you've made a note and you look back on it and it, it doesn't really explain fully what it was about or you're trying to get some more detail, it yep. sounds like it really gives you an instant way to get the full full details. Yeah, well here's the key, you know, I'm sitting in a seminar and I'm hearing the presenter and they're just saying so many good things, I can't absorb it or write it as quickly as they're saying it. Yeah. So trying to write notes while someone's talking is quite difficult to absorb everything. So by using a product like this, I can sit there and just type in keyword, which is 
how to set goals. Yeah. And then it will tag in the recording, that's where the presenter started talking about goal setting. So I can go home later and say, oh yeah, look, I remember that was a really good session. What did he say? I just pushed the, I just touched the screen at that, at that point in the text and it plays back from that point. I guess you could use that then for team training as well. So give that to another team member potentially, yeah. those relevant sections. Uh, Absolutely. So, so what happens is that those audios are saved as MP3s. I can then put them on my iPad and listen to them in the car if I wish, or I can just keep them in my iPad and it does back up to the cloud through Dropbox. Um, so I've got a backup of all this information. So even if I lose my iPad, I can always pull back a seminar that I went to last year and take, take out the notes and hear the speakers again. Yep. So that's the power of some of these applications that most people aren't using because they don't know they exist. So just another couple of really cool applications before we move on. Um, one of them that I'm really excited about is mind mapping because I've always been a big mind mapper as far as uh, brainstorming goes. And what I found with brainstorming is mind mapping on paper is brilliant. But one of the issues with mind mapping on paper is changing it after you've started. So there's this product called iThoughts. And iThoughts is, I think it's about an $8 product, uh, Jason. But what it basically does is it allows me to actually use my iPad just to throw all my ideas down and put them in some sort of organization. And if you can see on the screen now, I'm just sort of using the iThoughts help um, mind map as an example. But for those who haven't experienced mind mapping, it's one of the best ways that you'll ever use to brainstorm ideas, get them out of your head, and get them into some sort of organization. Um, this product just allows me to do it on my iPad, so I can be sitting down in a cafe or on the beach, and I can be saying, great, I've got to put my notes together for a presentation. So what I do is I put my central thought in the middle, then I, I, I basically hit one of the branch buttons up the top, and I just start typing. And as I type, it starts putting it into different squares and those squares will then be themes. And then underneath each theme, I can put the details and I can just keep going in infinite. But what it allows me to do is just get my thoughts out quickly and allows me to cluster them or chunk them into groups which make sense for me. Now, once I've finished doing my mind mapping, I can reorganize my thoughts because I can just drag things around from one section to the next, literally by using my finger. And so this is just another really cool tool that I use to do all of my brainstorming, all of my planning, and then what you can do is plug it into a projector and you can present it to your team straight off your iPad. Now the other thing this does is also synchronizes with the cloud. So everything I do here goes into my Dropbox and then I have my mapping application on my computer so I can just open it up there and I can get to work straight on it. So just another couple of really cool tools that I've been using just to get some productivity out of this iPad. Now the question of is the iPad a real business tool? Well, to me, if I can do my brainstorming and my planning on this little device, which is easy to carry, all of a sudden I become more productive because I don't need to wait till I've got a whiteboard in front of me to do my mind mapping. I can do it here. The other thing is if I can take notes during my meetings and keep them in one place where I can access them easily, then it's a powerful tool for me as well. So I guess having that mind map there too, if you have another distinction, even say you're sitting at a cafe, you can... You can uh, and if you have a thought, oh, hang on, maybe this thought would apply to that project or whatever, you can just pull pull that up, right? Wherever you are, add it, you're not going to lose it. Yep. So, so we're using this just to, great, to, to capture great ideas. And it's just there all the time. So what we can do is just keep adding to it as we go. So here, I'm just going to create a mind map on the iPad webinar and any ideas that we get during the webinar, I can switch over to here and I can add. Any follow-ups, I just add in there as well, and any questions. Now we will take questions towards the end of the webinar, so if anyone has any, just hold on to those and we'll get to those soon. So they're the key apps that I use, and there's one other one that I just wanted to mention briefly is because some of my applications are PC-based, and inevitably at this point in time I cannot get away from using my PC for certain activities. Like our CRM, we use a traditional CRM, which is Windows based. So the product I use to access that is a product by the name of, um, that's a good question, what is it? It's called Pocket Cloud. Now once again, it's a free app. And what it does is it allows me to remote access my computer on my desktop. So this is really cool. I can be, like I was in Beijing last week, and I could log into my computer on my desktop here. I could jump into my CRM and I could see what the team had been up to. Now I know there's a lot of web-based CRMs out there, 
a lot of companies are still preferring to stay with their local server and their confidential information being served on the local server. So in that situation, what we do is we have remote access in. So I can use my iPad to do that while I'm sitting in the airport. Even if you have a, um, <clears throat> a local server, there are a lot of CRM apps that support either delivered through a web page or a direct um, uh, CRM application on the iPad as well. Yep. So um, that, that's certainly another area where a lot of people can get some um, fantastic value out of the iPad in a business context. Right, great. So, uh, look, I've given you a, a bit of an idea of my real world application. What I'd like to ask you, Jason, because I, I know you work with a lot of people in the Mac world. Yep. Uh, you've been working with MacBooks and with Mac servers as well, but tell me a bit about some examples of clients that you work with that are using yep. iPads and how they're using them in business. Sure, so um, to give, I guess to give you some very specific real world uh, clients, I can talk about um, generally some of the, the clients we've got. We've got one client in the, the building trade that actually uses, they, they manufacture windows. And uh, on the plant floor, they actually use the iPad to um, update the manufacturing process and uh, actually use it to make sure that all their information is up to date. Um, really before that, they'd have to use a paper application. There's a lot of delay then in uh, getting real information yep. back, to, uh, back to the management. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we're seeing a lot of, I've sort of summarized here is quote, sell and record. So that's essentially uh, you have someone go out on site and see a customer um, and you can do a lot to shorten the sales cycle yes. by using uh, using the iPad, using the right sort of application. You can quote a client instantly, get all, access to all the information you need about your products and then actually close the sale with them and record details about that sale and even potentially take photos that, that are geotagged um, about that sale. So, um, okay. Particularly, uh, you know, if, you, if you've got an installation or something and you need some, some info about that. Yeah, and, and, and I think this is one of the areas that the iPad really kicks in is it has a camera in it. Yeah. It has a GPS tracking system in it. It has audio yeah. and it has video. So what it means is people can go out to a site with an iPad and I've seen the applications that can do this and an electrician can take a photo of a segment of a wall. Yeah. They can sketch on that photo and hit the send button and send it straight to the office and say, I need a quote for this. Someone can be in the office doing an estimate and send it back within, in real time. Yep. So the nice thing about all this is we can actually communicate quicker with our clients. Um, the, other, um, the other big one is, is tradespeople in the field. Typically you have your, your, your um, electricians, plumbers and so forth. And in particular, we have a plumbing company that uses all their plumbers have iPads and that is how they get their jobs allocated to them. Yep. So the calendar is basically driven off the iPad and when they go to a job, they've got checklists related to the job on the iPad. Yep. And so they can update those checklists and more or less immediately their, their head office knows what's going on. Yep. And they use the camera to take photos of the work, which is fantastic for making sure they control callbacks and all that sort of thing because uh, it's hard for, you know, if someone's um, claiming something's gone wrong, you've got the evidence attached to the job and it's really simple and it's simple enough that um, the tradies who don't have a lot of IT or computer skills um, can understand it. Yeah. Yeah, look, uh, I'm working with a couple of people, um, like one company is an electrical contracting company, and their quoting software is all on the iPad, so it's all driven live. They give it to each one of their guys. When the guy's out on site doing a quote, the yeah. geo tags, so it knows where they are. Yeah. They do the quote. They can get a signature on the screen, and they can get approval straight away. It goes through their FPOS system, so it gets paid on the spot. So that's the level of speed and intensity that we can be using technology at now. And I know there's many companies out there that are doing app development, um, that are actually developing apps for specific industries and they're very cost effective. So another example is we have a cleaning company and they use the iPad to do their cleaner quality control checks. So as they're walking around the premises, the, the GPS within the iPad tells them where they are and they can actually take photos of rooms, they can actually tick off checklists at the same time and hit the submit button, which means quality control is, is live. Yep. There's also um, a lot of wiki type um, applications where yeah, you have processes and procedures in, in your um, 
in your business, often it's very difficult to keep them up to date if they're paper based and people don't carry them around with them. Um, if it's, certainly if it's web based or, or using certain applications, you can actually run that directly on the iPad and if yep. your staff have access to that, they've immediately got access to all of the processes they need, mm -hmm. uh, which makes people a lot more efficient as well. Great. Right, so um, look, the one last thing we haven't mentioned and, and is worth mentioning is the fact that it's a great presentation tool. Um, using yep. Keynote, and you can even get um, a product called Quick Office, which allows you to have PowerPoint presentations. Um, you can do great presentations straight off the iPad in a sales meeting or to a client who's looking to buy your product or service. You can include video testimonials, which is live testimonials of your clients, photos of the sites that you've worked on, and all of this can be quite engaging, which is going to improve your sales process as well. So, if you're in a seminar or, or a sort of networking event as well, it can be fantastic if you've got um, like a keynote about your about your products and that sort of thing. It's not really practical to pull out a notebook if you're standing around having cocktails, ah. but it is practical to pull out an iPad and say, let me just show you a few details about that product or our company. Well, that, that's the other reason I sort of embrace the iPad because often in client meetings, it's very awkward to pull out a laptop and start yeah. typing because the screen becomes a barrier between yeah. yourself and the client. Where with the iPad, it's flat on the table, so you've got nothing to hide and you can share this with a client just like you would with a notepad. So, so they're, they're all the things you can do. But here's a, here's, here's a question, looking at real world application, what are the limitations of using an iPad, do you think? It's, um, I guess it, in a lot of ways it comes down to, um, to limitations on, on what people have experienced and, and what they think. And sometimes uh, you, know, you, you come up, you think against a, a limitation, but then someone will have come up with a way. Yeah around it. So it's kind of a hard question to uh, to answer because really there's a lot you can do and particularly if you've got an active um, network connection, um, people have uh, sometimes keyboards that they'll attach so sometimes one limitation that, that people mention is the ability to type quickly but if that's important to you actually you can get around that. You can just take a wireless keyboard with you. Yep. There's cases as well that have a built-in Bluetooth keyboard, so right. almost converted into a, into a notebook. Yep. In that regard, um, because I still see a lot of people carrying an iPad into a meeting and they never open it. Yep. So they still go to the paper. So there's, there's I suppose, a bit of education or a bit of a transition to technology. We don't trust it. Yeah. We feel more comfortable with pen and paper. And I think often people think, well, it's if if they think it's just the same as writing on a, on a notepad, they're just going to use a notepad. Right, and so as you say, it's about education to realise. Or, or hang on, if I think if that synchronises with, uh, um, you know, with the server and it's backed up, so I can't lose it, um, all those sort of things it, uh, becomes very important. Some people worry about security, having their client um, information on an iPad, yeah. for example. Well, there is uh, either through your own server or through iCloud, through uh, iCloud, there's the ability to locate your iPad if you think you've lost it, but there's right. also the ability to remote wipe it. So um, if you put a um, if you put a lock on your on your iPad, you can be sure someone if they pick it up can't easily mm. um, use it and uh, and you can remote wipe it so there's no okay. danger there. So security is definitely one part of the uh, application and what needs to be considered. Mm. What, what sort of considerations? So people who have either started using iPads or considering iPads, yeah. what are the things they need to think about before they launch into buying everyone in the company an iPad? Yeah, well you need to start really at the business end. There's no point in saying this is cool technology. What can I, um, you know, what apps can I find and how can I apply that to my business? That's Kind of the wrong way around. What you want to look at is what is my, what does my business need to increase our productivity, and then find a way, right, to, uh, to provide that. Okay, so it's really not just about buying a product because it's cool. Hmm. It's about actually working out the application yeah. and doing the training. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the transition to using this sort of technology is about changing people's attitude towards how they how they run their business. Absolutely. And if you start with the, the business view, you can then set, look. At the range of applications that are available or website or even if if it, you've got a very very specific need you can even get an application written bespoke specifically for your business if there's nothing else around that will fit those needs yeah but you don't have that information unless you start with the business what does the business need 
right, to improve its process. And I think one of the important things that we really need to discuss is, you know, technology is here to stay. Yeah. You know, some people say, oh, the iPad, it's not that practical, you know, it's still, you can't write on it properly, it, it doesn't provide the same functionality. But the truth of the matter is, we're in a market where speed is the currency of today. Yeah. And what that means is people are expecting more from their suppliers, um, faster transactions, more instant activation, all of those sorts of things. So this technology is really just an enabler. And it's not a matter of if you're going to use it, it's a matter of when you're going to implement it within the business. And the better you implement it, um, that can transfer that speeding up of um, of the expectation of the business process from a stress point, because a lot of people feel stress about the fact that they're expected to do things faster, right? Yeah. If you get your technology right, of course, then it becomes uh, a competitive advantage rather than a stress point. Right, right. Because you know it all, it all boils down to when when we implement change in a business, it's really quite important to support that change with some training, yep. uh, with some support, and to understand that people are creatures of habit. So you can give someone an iPad and hope it changes their life, but the reality is it's just an iPad. Yep. What's going to change their life is when they see the benefit of using this, how it allows them to do more in less time. We see it all the time with CRM packages that if we install it and the client declines to take training. Yeah. You come back and speak to the client a month later and they're just not using it because people don't change the way they behave. But if you put in a proper training package and people will commit to making those slow changes over time, then it, it boosts productivity gigantically. Excellent, excellent. So, um, look, I suppose um, we might see if there's anyone with questions. Um, I don't know. Let's see if we can make this work. If there's anyone with any questions, if you would just want to raise your hand, there should be a hand icon on your screen. Um, we might open up to some questions now to see if there's um, anything we can help people with. So, Angela, let's see if we can get you online. Hang on one second. You're there, Angela. Hello. Can we hear you? Okay, we can't hear you. What we might do is try and get you to type in your message in the... That there will be on the little uh, go to webinar console. There's a uh, a chat section. Yep. yep. I've got a question in here from uh, Steve, which is, how do I sync to the cloud using Dropbox? Very, very good question. Very easy. Look, uh, Dropbox is one of those products. What you need to do first is download it onto your computer. Uh, when you download it onto your PC, by the way, it's a free product. When you start, you get two gigabytes for free. Um, it'll create a subdirectory called Dropbox, My Dropbox, which is under My Documents. Anything that you put into that file, into that subdirectory, whether you create a subdirectory under it or, or, or not, will actually now synchronize with the cloud. Then on your iPad, you download Dropbox as well. Now, if you log into the same account, then what happens is you're able to see all of those files. Now, if they're PDF files, you should be able to open up in a viewer. Um, actually, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, if you want to access those files, then what we do is we um, have to have the application. So you might need to download an application like Quick Office. If it's just PDFs, you can view them in things like Note Taker or even in Pocket Cloud. So that's how we do that. I hope that answers your question, Stephen. We have another. We've got a few coming through. So let's go with uh, Sharon. So how do we cut and paste a... A note, email from Notes Plus to or Evernote. Oh, how do you cut and paste a note into em, into email from Notes Plus or Evernote? Well, I think it's the same with the iPad. I think when you when you when you touch and hold some words on the screen, you'll get that selection um, yeah. icon, you and then you just drag the two to, dots to select some text with a with a selection box, and you can drag that that uh, box backwards and forwards to, to make it larger or smaller and then select the uh, the copy or the cut option. When you then transfer across to uh, to your email application, then once again, sort of press and hold if you like where you want to paste that, it should give you a, a little pop up and then you just select paste. Yeah. Now the other thing there, Sharon, is if it's an attachment to an email, what you can do is you can use the open in option. So if there's an arrow at the top right hand of the screen, you use that and it says open in, and then you can open it in Notes Plus or Evernote as well. A lot of applications have like a little square with a with a um, 
with an arrow in it. To, and if you hit that, then often there's the option to email, you know, email this photo or email this note or, or whatever, which will create an email, which you can then go in and modify and, uh, and send that one to. Yep. Great. So um, I've got another one here from Linda. Can you have wireless internet via iPad? Does it have a file system like a laptop for storing um, OS keys, etc.? So the the iPad, there's two broadly in a networking sense. There's two versions. One just has Wi-Fi, and the other has uh, Wi-Fi and a, a mobile phone type connection, a 3G connection. The Wi-Fi version can join a wireless network, and uh, if you don't have a 3G connection, but you've got say an iPhone, then you can use what's called tethering. You can allow your iPhone to give the iPad an internet connection. The reverse applies as well. So if you've got a um, a 3G card in your iPad, you can turn on um, you can turn on personal hotspot to allow other devices to tether off your iPad, so that it acts as the internet uh, connection. Um, so yeah, that's certainly possible. Does it have a file system? The second part of the question, your question was, does it have a file system like laptops? Not in exactly the same way, and um, that's where uh, tools like um, Dropbox. Uh, come in in terms of the, the, often the easiest way to uh, to transfer that sort of information. If you're wanting to avoid using the cloud like that, then uh, tools like Carrier Workspace can allow you to keep it within your company. And there's other other tools like that as well. Yeah. Um, there's another question here from Steve. <coughs> Is so do I link Evernote with Dropbox as well? Well, the way I look at it, Evernote and Dropbox are similar in what they do is they store file systems. They don't integrate with each other. So Dropbox is very much like having a subdirectory structure, very much like a Windows computer. So what you've got is file systems where you can actually store different kinds of files. With Evernote, it actually is a bit more character based. So it allows me to have a note. Now with that note, I can attach files as well, which means they synchronize between the two. So they're two slightly different applications. Um, if you if you like the way I look at it is Evernote is something that I use to take just short notes, where Dropbox I use to keep sophisticated files like Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, uh, anything that actually is open in a bigger application. Um, a couple of others. So we're getting a few um, suggestions as to to uh, uh, applications that you guys are using and uh, enjoying and find, finding useful. So. Um, Graham Isaacs has pointed out that uh, he uses a, a great application called Cloudon, which is free, and it's quite a lot like Microsoft Office for the for the iPad. It's like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and uh, it links direct, directly to Dropbox as well. So that's not one I've used, but um, sounds great, Graham. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. And uh, Heather's also mentioned a couple. Uh, one is Seven Note. Seven Notes converts handwriting to typing. Sounds very cool. There's some, there's uh, <coughs> quite a few uh, applications that do that, of course, but it's always great to hear one that people have particular success with. Yeah. The second one she's mentioned is Dragon. Dragon Dictate has been around for a long time and it's a fantastic app. I use it on my iPhone as well. What it means is I can be in the car or I can be doing something else. I can push the record button and it actually records my voice and converts it to text. Some people who don't like typing, yeah, they can say this a lot of time as well. Not a great typist. Great. So, um, look, there's some good feedback coming through. Is there any other questions that people might have that uh, about how to use the iPad in business, about any limitations or challenges they're faced with using the iPad? Graham's app was called Cloud On. For someone mentioned, what was that app again? Uh, the app that Graham mentioned was called Cloud On. C L O U D O N. So that's a really good handwriting app. Now, um, a lot of the apps, like apps come out every day. The thing I found with apps is I often ask people when they walk in with their iPad, what apps are you using? What's your favorite? Because what I find is people show me things I've never heard of before. And inevitably, they come up with some brilliant ones. I'll give you another one that someone showed me just last week. It's, a, it's an app called Skitch, S-K-I-T-C-H. And that's actually created by the same people that created Evernote. What it allows you to do is take a photo of anything and then you can just draw arrows and notes straight onto the photo and it saves it to Evernote automatically. So it means I can take very quick uh, 
um, sort of take a photo of something that I need to explain to someone, I can draw a sketch on it and save it, and there it is in Evernote. So that's fantastic for um, sharing ideas amongst the team, isn't it? If you've got, um, we were talking about tradespeople before, for example, if you've got a sales guy who needs to say, what do you think about this heater? Take a photo of it and mark up on it and say, you know, look at this corrosion here, for example, is that going to be a problem for us? Yes. Yeah. So that's the sort of thing we can do. Here's a question. Um, just wish there was a better app for creating office docs. Uh, that's from Heather. Now, Sounds I, like um, maybe uh, if you haven't tried Cloud on, Graham certainly um, thinks that's the, the bomb for that. That is. Look, the other one is Quick Office. And I heard a rumor today, and it's unofficial, that um, I was talking to an IT fellow who said Microsoft is actually developing its Office suite yep. so that it can be loaded onto the iPad. Now, that's not happening now, but I believe it's going to happen by iPad 4. Actually, I thought that was official, so I could okay. be wrong on that, but I, I think uh, my understanding was that they, they certainly were, but I could have that wrong. Look, um, Lydia's asked, do you need to have Apple-based office computers to work with iPad outside the office? The answer is definitely not. See, things like Evernote, Evernote has a Apple version, it has a, uh, has a PC version as well, so you can load it onto Windows 7. That's one of the biggest strengths. Same with Dropbox. All of these applications can be used on Windows-based computers in the office, and then you can use them on your iPad, so you've got cross-platform integration. Even most of the iCloud features don't require a Mac. Yep, so uh, there we go. The question's been asked again. The best uh, app for doing Excel, Excel documents and access from Dropbox. The one I'm using at the moment, and I can't say it's the best, but I'm very happy with it, is Quick Office which is a bit expensive in the realm of apps at $20. But compared to buying software in the good old days when it was $500, it's That's a bargain. Nice. And what it does is it integrates directly with Dropbox, which means I can open Excel spreadsheets and I can open Word documents and I can edit them. It doesn't have the same level of um, options that I do get when I'm using Word. Um, but what I find is if you want to have that level, level of details, at this point, I'd probably stick with Pages. Um, here we go, we've got a few people. Uh, any last questions? We're sort of coming towards the end of this uh, webinar, so if there's any last questions or comments that people would like to throw into the chat session, uh, we'd love to answer those. And um, we'll just take a few more before we start wrapping up. Well, it sounds like we've uh, got through most of those. So. Um, if you want more information, uh, there's some contact details on the screen here, and we'll uh, we'll follow up with uh, an email later on. Um, if it's a specific technical question, then it's probably best for me. The business process questions, David's certainly the expert in uh, in that area. Yeah, as yeah. well. Look, um, it's a bit. How do you spell skitch? S K I T C H. Yep, that's exactly how you spell it. S K I T C H. Should be able to find that. Um, look, from my point of view, I see the iPad as a permanent part of business. Yeah. I think people will be using them way into the future. Um, they're going to be developing more. The apps are going to get better. The integration is going to become more and more simple. Um, things like payment gateways, things like um, integration between the video, the, the audio, and the text is going to mean that we're going to have a lot more information available to us at any point in time. So either way, if anyone's interested in more information, either contact myself or Jason. Uh, very happy to answer any other questions. Other than that, um, I'd like to thank Jason very much for his time today. It's thank been very you. informative. And I'd like to thank you all for attending. Um, it's been a great session, and uh, good luck with your iPad. I'd like to see lots more of them out there. Thank you all. All right, thanks very much. Uh, we'll catch you later.